Ever thought your shower concert brought on the rain? That's a classic case of the post hoc ergo propter hoc, or after this, therefore, because of this fallacy. Let's debunk why this logic doesn't hold water. Let's dissect this fallacy. It's easier to understand than to say, trust me, and it's everywhere. It's a fancy way of saying we mistakenly believe that if something happens before another, the first thing must have caused the second. Like thinking my sneeze made those dominoes fall. Imagine thinking I wore my lucky shirt and aced the test. It's tempting to credit the shirt, but let's be real. Or I ate garlic and my flu vanished. Garlic is great, but it's not a magic flu fighter. In literature, this fallacy appears too. Take Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. After Caesar's death, Brutus argues that his death would benefit Rome because Caesar was ambitious. He states, Caesar loved me. I weep for him as he was fortunate. I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. Here Brutus assumes that Caesar's ambition and its removal would directly lead to Rome's prosperity, overlooking the many political and social factors at play. Believing this fallacy can lead us astray, conflating mere coincidence with actual causation. It's like mixing up the plot of a story with its moral. Unmask this fallacy by questioning assumptions that rely solely on sequence. Digging for more evidence helps reveal a fuller picture beyond just first then. And that wraps up our myth-busting session on the post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy. Always question the connection between events. And you know the drill. Hit like, subscribe, and push that notification bell to stay abreast of new videos. And in the meantime, check these other ones out on logical fallacies or read my book Mind Traps, linked in the description.